morning. Good morning. I'm Jonathan from Lake Stevens Gold Creek. I'm so excited to be here on Father's Day and continue with our kids series, Summer Road Trip. How many of you have ever been on a camp out? Do you camp out in a camper or do you camp out the old traditional way in a tent like this one? Who has camped with their families and loved it? Who here hates camping and will never go back as long as you live? Camping has always been a popular way to vacation for some people. The good thing about camping is it allows you to enjoy the great outdoors. It gets you away from the comforts of your home and hotels. It separates you from TV and the internet and video games. It puts you close to nature where you can hike and fish and look for birds. The bad part about camping is that it takes place outdoors. There's no TV, no internet, and no video games. There's rain, heat, humidity, sweating, bugs, and getting dirty. There's dirty showers and smelly chemical toilets. Camping can either be a joy or a nightmare, and a lot of it depends on how you prepare. If you plan ahead, you can have everything you need on hand to make your camping a success. That means you need to have food and water, sleeping bags, sunscreen, maps, flashlights, stuff to cook in, and something to start a fire. If you're gonna be in the woods, you better pack it at home or you'll be lost without it. Sometimes we can prepare for the challenges in our lives. We can plan ahead and pack what we need for the next leg of our journey. But what happens when you end up someplace unexpected? What if you take a turn you didn't plan to take and you find yourself lost or in need of help? It reminds me of our friends, the Israelites, as they made their way through the wilderness, which is what we'll be talking about today. Now let's head over to worship with a new song that reminds us that God is always up to something good. Hey guys, welcome. It's time for worship. So wherever you're at, you're in your living room, your bedroom, your playroom, get up and let your parents hear it. Let's go.
Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris from Gold Creek Woodenville. Camping can be a real challenge. There's things outside sometimes that can bring a lot of discomfort to you. Sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's too cold. There's rain sometimes, and then sometimes it's too windy to where you have to stake down all your things so they don't fly away. And there's bugs that live outside too. All of these things can bring real discomfort and turn a night in the woods real sour really fast. But even on the worst nights, we have things that we can be thankful for out in the woods. We have a tent over our heads sometimes to keep us out of the elements. We have food and water always. We have good friends that we're always with, friends or family or both. And we also have beautiful scenery no matter what the weather is all around us to be able to look at. In today's Bible story, we're going to talk about how God always helps us and is there for us in the times that we need him exactly. Let's check it out. God's story, wilderness. So part of God's story is about how God took care of his family in the wilderness. And it begins like this. For many years, God's family was stuck as slaves in Egypt. So God chose a guy named Moses to lead them out of slavery and into an amazing home called Canaan or the promised land where they could be free. From the moment the Israelites left Egypt, God made it clear that he was with his family. He led them with a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. He actually split the Red Sea in two parts so they could walk to safety. But the journey from Egypt to the promised land was hard. In fact, the Israelites didn't know where to find food and water or when they would get to Canaan. So just three days after leaving Egypt, they started complaining. What are we going to drink? Now Moses knew that God hadn't freed them from Egypt and parted the Red Sea just to let them die of thirst in the desert. So he asked the Lord to help and God helped. Then about a month later, they complained again. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There, we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. Now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us to death. They actually wished they could be slaves again. Kids, have you ever complained about something instead of trusting God for help? Well, guess what? God had a plan his family never could have imagined. In the morning, dew covered the ground, and when it was gone, there were flakes of food that looked like frost. The Israelites called it manna, which means, what is it? Moses told them to eat it all and not to save any. But of course, some people saved a little, just to be safe. Remember, they were worried they wouldn't have what they needed. The next morning, the old manna was full of maggots, which are little bugs, yuck! But the good news is, there was also new manna. See, God wanted them to trust him every single day. What's really crazy though, is on the sixth day of every week, God did tell them to gather enough for two days. That way, they had one day to rest. It's called a Sabbath and it's a day of rest. So when they woke up on the seventh day of the week, the manna they had saved was as fresh as it was when it first fell. We don't know how that happened, but it did. Hey guys, it's Brian here from Mill Creek Gold Creek. That story is truly amazing and hard to even picture in my mind. Sometimes life can be even more difficult than camping. We find ourselves in some difficult situations, some storms that seem like they will never end. We wonder how we got there and how we will ever get out. Isn't it good to know we serve a God who knows exactly what we need and will give it to us right when we need it? Just as he did for Israel, providing manna and quail when they were hungry, God can bless us in ways we never imagined he would. Today's memory verse is a great reminder. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable for him than any birds. Luke 12, 24. Well said, Brian. Hi, I'm Abby from Mill Creek, Gold Creek, and I'm here with my girls, Grace and Anna. He wants us to say, God, I know you provide.
life. I trust you. Give me what I need. When you trust God in big and little things, He will always answer and always provide. It reminds me of how fathers provide for their kids. Talking about fathers, should we do a cool camp craft for dad? All right. So we are gonna make a s'more today. So these supplies are in your bags from service. The bags you get when you go to the drive-in service. You're gonna get paper graham crackers and girls, you can start putting it together if you want. So you get paper graham, graham crackers, a paper chocolate square, and then we have cotton balls for the marshmallows. So what we're gonna do is assemble our s'more. So Anna and Grace are gluing their marshmallows to the graham cracker. And then they're gonna glue the graham cracker and the chocolate together. Put that together. And then the very last step is gluing your graham cracker and chocolate to your um, cotton ball marshmallows. So you put some glue. Nice job. And it's smashed on there and let's all fold up our s'mores. Yummy, delicious, and ready to eat. All right. So what we've learned is God is powerful and he will always give us the things we need. Thank our Heavenly Father every day for the small things He has given you and trust Him to always meet your needs. All right, let's worship with Wave Walker. is so simple faith like a child i give you an inch and you take me a mile i feel the wind rush and the thunder roll two feet on the water only one way to go yeah. i don't gotta be afraid no more no because i know you up through the storm i'm more than just a talk i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a Cause you 